I love that <laughs> Thank song. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really gonna, can I do the music it. video? Yes, of course. I'll, I'll give you a clip the next of me one. You're the star of it. Yeah. I've got a clip of me dancing. Can I be the star in it? Well, as long as you send me that clip, so I can test I'll it. I'll send you the clip. Yeah, you yeah. can test it first. You'll yeah. see it. And you can check it out as well. It's on Instagram. You're better than me, though. It's not about me. No, no. <laughs> it's not about me, Matt. It's all about you. So, so talk to me then. You are a, a vocalist. Yes. Yeah. Uh, UB40, which has been going on for years. You weren't there at the beginning, though. No, no, no. Obviously. Not at all, no. obviously. No. When did you join the band? How did that come about? I joined in 2010. What Basically, what it was, when Ali Campbell left the original lineup mm. of UB40, he, he went solo. Um, and kind of around the 2000, end of 2010, I joined him as a vocalist mm. to be part of his band um, and was with him for 12 years. Mm. He just carried on. We toured the world together and... You know, it was a, a nice little blend. But were you a vocalist then, though, when you were joining? It? I'd done various vocals for different people over the years. Yeah. You know, that was, I was a jobbing vocalist, you yeah. know. I'd been in bands, my own bands. I was also a songwriter. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of involved in the industry from, from, from way back, you know. So, so was that your big break then, because you said you were jobbing and everything? UB40 is a pretty huge band. It was a big break in the sense for me because I'm from Birmingham. Mm. So anybody who's from Birmingham would know that the that you'd be 40 are like the Beatles of Birmingham, mm. you know. So to be a part of that and also be a part of something that you followed from, you know, when I was at school, uh, leaving school uh, mm. the last years, it was all Homely Girl and, you know, Kingston Town. So to be a part of that and sing Red Red Wine every night was such a privilege, you know. So it was amazing, yeah. You sang that. You see, the thing is, I used to see UB40 and I didn't really know what any of the band members looked like. Yeah. And that one song, Red Red, I was like, oh, God, not that song again. Yeah. But as you get older, you realise... What a classic tune that is. I mean, that is a classic song. Oh, it's amazing. It really is amazing. I mean, the thing is, I've toured, I've been to places that I didn't even know existed, you know, singing that What's song. What's the weirdest place you've been that you didn't Well, know we, we've done Papua New Guinea. Oh, lovely. We did Papua New Guinea. Uh, we did the Solomon, Solomon Islands. Um, did you actually French get to, to go out much and see the things whether you were there or was it just all... It depends on whether we had a few days off or not. Um, but just experiencing those different cultures was something special, but... Red Red Wine, mm. that was the main song as soon as you went on stage. Mm. That's what I think people would have been happy if we'd have just done an hour and a half of singing Red Red Wine, though, because that's all they wanted, mm. really. Mm. So, yeah, it was a privilege. It was great. And your time in the band, if you were to describe it in a, in a nutshell, what would you say it was? What was it like? Um, it kind of split down the middle. There's, it's, it was a wonderful thing because it was an experience nobody could ever have. You know what I mean? Touring the world, going to places, like I've said, that I've never even dreamed of, going to Hawaii and um, Japan and New Zealand, all these beautiful wow. places. But um, on the other hand, it was very um, cheap, in a sense. It was very hung together, very loosely, and, and wasn't really the band wasn't really looked after, in a sense, in that way. Oh, really? You so know. you didn't get to stay in five-star hotels and people imagine? We stayed in nice hotels. I think what it stemmed from originally with, with Ali when he first left the original lineup, it was more that he, he, he couldn't really have sold like a, a mecha bingo. At, you know, he, he was on his own, he was struggling. And yeah. the musicians that he had in the band, they, they're world-class musicians and they played with world-class artists. Um, and we kind of stuck by him. We, he said, look, you know, I'm going to get back on my feet. And as soon as I'm back on my feet, you know, I'll look after you. Um, that never really happened, unfortunately. Um, from going from that point in 2010 up until more or less when I left before the pandemic in 2019, um, we were doing the O2 Arena really on the same kind of money that we were doing crappy little... The is in, really? you know. Yeah, I imagine, unfortunately. I imagine the people doing these things have got paid a fortune. So in the end, talk to me about leaving the band and, and why that all came about. Because, I mean, we've alluded to it that it was part of yeah. something to do with the vaccine. But what, what, what was the situation? Describe what happened. It came about in 2021, March, it would have been. Um, I'd already had a flu vaccine, which I had a, a reaction to. Um, for me, going through the pandemic... say you had a reaction, because I had a job that had a reaction, which I think brought on an autoimmune condition. Mm. And, you know, I had, it was literally within three or four weeks of this thing. Yeah. And, then, you know, that, that ever since then, I've never been the same. And I actually have to make sure now things like COVID jobs, I'll have to have them otherwise. Of course. So what, what kind of... Can you say what the reaction was? No, yeah, like? absolutely. Yeah, I had the flu. Basically, I have a, a condition called atrial fibrillation, which my, my heartbeat is irregular. I had a, a, a procedure called a cardio version, which shocks your heart back into rhythm. The consultant at the time said to me, I advise you that you get the flu jab because you're considered as being vulnerable 
after having such a procedure. So listen to the doctor, absolutely fine. I had the flu jab. Within 36 hours, I had a huge growth in my lymph gland underneath <coughs> my armpit. Yeah. Um, and as it started to decrease and go down, it threw my heart back out of rhythm. So it was a, a, quite a severe reaction to this vaccination. And, and did they say it was definitely a reaction to that? Yes, or? yeah, did. yeah. Um, so I knew from that point on, being as it was SARS, being the same kind of virus, I, I was, the COVID vaccine was not for me. Yeah. Um, so at that point with UB40, it came across that we were, um, it, it looked like we were going to go out and start doing some live work again. And the management was saying, look, you know, the prospect is there. We, we're going to put things in place. Uh, one thing we will stipulate, though, is that each band member has got to have the vaccine so we can continue to work. Um, unfortunately, I, obviously, I couldn't have it. So I kind of put that across to the band saying, look, you know, this is, I've had this side effect. They knew the condition with the, uh, the atrial fibrillation. Um, anyway, a couple of months went on, fast forward, in, and I just said, look, unless I have this vaccine, am I still permitted to be part of this unit and perform? And they said no. Um, you need to have the COVID vax. So they actually said that to you square in your face. No, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Not at all. I wish they had it done. That would have been wonderful. It was all done via text message. Oh, really? So, so the, the, what you have is written there. Them saying no, unless you have this vaccine, we can't. Yeah, it was actually my other half's um, idea to get it in writing. Yeah. So you need to speak to these people and get it in writing. Uh, so I have all that. Yeah. So it's actually in writing. They've actually said it. Obviously, they're not here to defend themselves. No, no, no. Of course, but, but no. But it's in writing. But it's in writing. Yeah. It. So, so this is specifically, so because of that, you were not able to go uh, on tour with the, with the band? No, no. And ironically, the first show they had back was in Leeds at Millennium Square. Millennium Square, sorry. And um, they had to cancel anyway because two of the uh, band members tested positive for COVID and they'd all been vaccinated. So I could have gone through a procedure and been seriously damaged yeah. for the first show to be cancelled Well, maybe, anyway. but maybe not. But the other thing is, actually... If they were going abroad to other countries, lots of those countries had their own vaccination deals as well. So some countries you couldn't... Absolutely. There, there, there so, could have been procedures that yeah. they could have gone down to say, well, we will do the PCR route. We'll do, you know, there, there was nothing. It was just like dead. No, that's it. You're out, you know. So that's, that was that. So, so talk to me about how, that, how that's been for you and, and what implications that's had for you. It's, it's had a lot of implications on me. I've suffered from mental health issues since my mother passed away in uh, 1999. I've had depression. Um, the thing is with touring, when you finish a tour, you kind of go into your own little lockdown anyway. That's what you do because you've been touring for so long and travelling. You just want to go home. But when the pandemic hit and we did the lockdown thing, it kind of went on a bit longer than you were used to. it. And the mental health side of things did kick in. It was, you know, and everybody's different who suffers with depression. We all deal with it in our own uh, little ways. Um, for me, the whole thing with work was it was the light at the end of the tunnel. It was something to get through, to get to that point. So when that actually hit, you know, and they said, no, you, you can't work now because, you know, you've got to have the vaccine. Um, it, it kind of decimated everything for me. You know, it kind of, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do with myself, you know, because that was the goal to get back to so, work. So what about in terms of support then? Is there anybody who's sort of fighting your corner to... There's, oh, God, yeah, now you've mentioned that now, the wonderful Workers of England Union. They've supported me uh, endlessly through the whole of this. Um, so what are they? What, what exactly? Well, they're a union. They're based up north. Uh, they're in um, Manchester. And they've basically looked after me. They've kind of stood by me um, in the sense where there's been so many people that have, you know, because the, the vaccine was mandated, especially in the healthcare sector, that were forced into having the vaccine, um, and, you know, unfortunately, there's thousands upon thousands of people that are injured from this vaccine now. Um, and they don't know where to go. They don't know who to talk to. And these people have lost, you know, their, their livelihoods. They've lost their homes. They've got no money. And they don't know who to talk to. So what I'm trying to do is, with my situation with UB40 is help that. I mean, all their stuff, the Workers of England Union, is posted over my social medias. It's on my website. Uh, it's easy to join. Um, and they can help. You know, there is somebody yes, out there were, to talk to, you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in a way, some, some would say they weren't forced, but if they didn't do it, then they couldn't do something else because, obviously, you do have your own choices to work. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's the key, so, so I think it's choice more than anything. the choice would mean that you couldn't do the job you were doing if you took the choice of not doing it. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, that, that is tough. That is tough. So, so 
So, so, so now where are you? So if you're in the situation where you've got somebody fighting your corner now, yeah. I don't know whether you can talk about where you are with it and, and, and you know, what your next step is. Then what is the next Well, obviously, step? We, we, we want to take legal proceedings, obviously, towards uh, UB40 featuring Ali and use this as a precedent uh, for, for other people that have been in that situation. Especially, I mean, I kind of tend to see money in the healthcare sector that people were forced into doing it. And, well, not, not so much forced. They but given felt, a choice that was almost like an ultimatum, I suppose. And some people felt pushed into it, yeah. you know. Um, so now they're on their own. And like I've said, they, you know, they've lost a lot. Their homes, their livelihoods, everything. And the mental health of these people as well. You know, they don't know where to turn. And, and people are struggling. So if I can be that person to help or guide and, you know, push it through, then so be, you know, I really want to help. So if you're people. doing that, what if, you, if people want to sort of, you know, get in touch? Are you doing anything for people to, to, to find out more about this? Well, there's the track that's there at the minute that you played that's earlier, Kindly. Yeah, strong. It, it, for me, it was a self-help um, situation, writing that. It was, you know, when you don't know where to turn and you feel that you need to empower yourself and empower others uh, to not be bullied, to not be pushed around, to do the right thing. Um, that's what it was for me, getting that out there. Um, but, yeah, like I said, working with the Workers of England Union, I've, all their links are all over my social media, Matt Hoy Official. Um, well, so if we can help anybody in the same position, then please get in touch. Well, well people will look. I know you're crowdfunding as well, aren't you? Oh, God, we're doing the crowdfunding thing. This is, this is the beginning of it. If we can get pushed this through, we can get the support, it will definitely set a precedence. Well, listen, Matt, it's been so good to talk to you. Uh, your single Strong, is it out now? Or it is out now. It's all over YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And is it doing well? Down like, it's doing really, really well. I'm so surprised. It would have done better if you were dancing on it. Uh, yeah, well, you, 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 you know, I wish you'd have told me beforehand, but you know. Well, is there, so you're saying there's a video out there already? Yeah. You can add my clip in, I'll show you. I'll have to put an extra 30 seconds on the end, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds? Well, just five, <laughs> Matt Hoy. Really good to talk. Oh, pleasure. Thank you, Nana. Thank you. He was a man, member of UB40, now he's doing his own thing. It's called Strong. You need to check it out. He's a reggae artist. Well, I must say, although in some cases people do have adverse reactions to vaccines, they are proven to be safe and effective for the vast majority of people. We also requested a response from UB40 but haven't heard back. However, UB40 have previously said that whilst we accept that everybody's freedom of choice and decision regarding taking the vaccine, unfortunately, the EU and many other countries have quarantined periods and legislation in place that makes touring and performing incredibly difficult for us to be able to plan for obligated dates. The vaccine is backing everybody into a corner. Nobody should be forced to take it. But this was Matt's decision to leave. We would like to wish Matt all the best in his future endeavours and thank him once again.